Shalom family, welcome back to Unsectarian Wisdom. I'm Elia, and this is the first book we're going to get into today. This is the first book of my uh, channel that I'll be getting into and reading. It's called The Doctrines of Adai the Apostle. Um, this is supposed to be, well, I guess, just to give you a quick summary, the book is about an apostle, the uh, Messiah Jesus or Yahusha. Whichever you want to call him or whatever name you have for him. But Adai is an apostle of Yahusha who was sent to heal a king after the death of Yahusha or Jesus. So we're going to go ahead and just jump in. I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not going to do too much as far as introduction. I'm just going to jump in. Because I, I don't want you guys, man, just I want you guys to be like, man, jump in the book. Alright, this is the first page. So I'm showing you. Oh my bad, I'm covering. First page. And the first page is page three. Man, this is difficult trying to show. Okay, page three. All right, here I go. On the epistle of King Abgar, the son of King Manu, and the time he sent it to our master who was in Jerusalem, and the time Adai the apostle came to him, Abgar, who dwelt in Urha, and what he spoke in his gospel, and what he said and commanded when he departed from this world, to those who had inherited from him the blessings of the priesthood. In the year 343 of the Seleucid era, and in the dominion of our master Tiberius, the Roman emperor, and in the dominion of King Abgar, son of King Manu, in the month of October, on the twelfth day, Abgar Ukama sent Marihab and Shamshagram, high officials, and dignitaries from his kingdom, and Hanan, the archive keeper, to the city known in Greek as Eleutheropolis, Eleutheropolis, but in Aramaic as Beth Gubrin, to the great Sabinus, the son of E. Storgias, the second in command. To our master and emperor who ruled over Syria, Phoenicia, Israel, and the whole country of Mesopotamia. They brought him epistles regarding the affairs of the empire. And when they reached him, he received them with enjoyment and much nobility. And they stayed with him for 25 days. He composed for them a reply to the epistles and sent them to King Abgar. When they departed from him, they headed towards Jerusalem. And they saw many people who came from far away to see Christ because the eminence of his great deeds had traveled to the remotest of lands. When Mariba, when Marihab, Sho, Shagram, and Hanan, the keeper of the archives, saw those people, they joined those strangers on the way to Jerusalem. Upon entering, Jeru upon entering Jerusalem, they saw Christ and they rejoiced with the whole host. Who were always around him, but they also saw the Jewish priest who were standing in groups and pondering what they should do to him, for they were disturbed to see that a great many of their people confessed him, and they stayed in Jerusalem for ten days. And Hanan, the keeper of the archives, recorded everything he witnessed Christ doing. Nothing that he did escaped him until they set off, and then they departed and went to Urha wherein they presented themselves before King Abgar, their own ruler, who had sent them, and they gave him the reply to the epistles, which they had brought with them. After the epistles were read, they began to give the king an account of all they had witnessed and all deeds Christ had performed in Jerusalem. And Hanan, the keeper of the archives, read, read before him all he had recorded and brought along. And when King Abgar heard the accounts, he was amazed and marveled, and so were his princes, who stood before him. Abgar then said to them, These impressive works are not human, but they come from God, for no one from this world can make the dead alive again, except for God. And Abgar expressed his wish to pass over and head to Israel, and witness with his own eyes all those miracles Christ was working. But since he was not able to pass through the land of the Romans, which he did not rule over, lest this cause hostility. He wrote an epistle and sent it to Christ, 
by the hand of Hanan, the keeper of the archives. He left behind Urha on the 14th day of March and entered Jerusalem on the 12th day of April. On the fourth day of the week, and he found Christ at the house of Gamaliel, Gamali, Gamaliel, the chief priest of the Jews. The epistle was opened before him and read thus, Abgar Ukama to Jesus, the good healer, who has appeared in the land of Jerusalem. Peace, my master. I'm sorry, my nose is itching. Peace, my master. I have heard of you and of your healing. That it that it is not my medicines and roots that you heal. That it is not by medicines and roots that you heal. But by your word you open the eyes of the blind. You make the crippled able to walk. Cleanse the lepers and make the deaf capable of hearing. And you heal by your word. The mad who are possessed by unclean spirits. And those who are troubled. You also bring the dead to life. And when I heard of these great miracles that you work, I said to myself that either you are God who has come down from heaven and performs all these deeds, or you are the son of God who does all these wonders. Thus, I have written to request of you to come to me, the one who worships you, and to heal the disease which I have, as I have belief in you. This also I have heard, that, you, that the Jewish priests mutter against you and harass you and would even like to crucify you and seek to treat you heartlessly. I am ruler over a small but beautiful city, and it is more than enough for both to dwell therein peacefully. When Jesus took possession of the epistle at the residence of the chief priests of the Jews, he said to Hanan, the keeper of the archives, go and say to your master, who has sent you to me. Blessed are you who even though you have not seen me, believe in me. For it is written of me, those who see me shall not believe in me, and those who see me not shall believe in me. But as to that which you have written to me, namely that I should come to you, that for which I was sent here is now completed, and I am going up to my father who sent me. And when I am with him, I will send to you one of my disciples, and he will cure the disease which you have and restore your good health, and all who are with you he will convert to eternal life. Your city shall be blessed, and no enemy shall ever triumph over it. When Hanan the keeper of the archives saw that Jesus spoke to him like that, since he also was the king's painter, he began to paint a portrait of Jesus with a variety of paint, and brought it with him to King Abgar, his master. And when King Abgar, and when King Abgar saw the portrait, he received it with much happiness and placed it with great honor in one of his palace's compounds. Hanan, the keeper of the archives, related to him all he had heard from Jesus, as his words had been put by him in writing. After Christ had ascended to heaven, Judas Thomas sent to Abgar Adai, the apostle, who was one of the 72 apostles. And when Adai came, and when Adai came to the city of Urha, he lodged in the house of Tobias, the son of Tobias the Jew, who was from Israel. Word of his arrival spread throughout the land, and one of the nobles of Abgar, by the name of Abdu, the son of Abdu, one of those who had kneeled before Abgar, went and spoke the following words about Adai. Behold, a messenger has come and lodges here, he of whom Jesus said to you, I send to you one of my disciples. And when Abgar heard these words and of the impressive deeds which Adai had performed and of the amazing healings which he had carried out, he reckoned, verily, this is he whom Jesus sent, saying, when I have ascended to heaven, I will send to you one of my disciples and he will heal your disease. Abgar therefore sent for Tobias and said to him, I have heard that a stranger who possesses great powers has come and has taken lodging in our house. Bring him to me, for he is my great hope of recovery. Tobias went early on the next morning and took Adai the apostle, whom he brought to Abgar. Adai himself was aware 
that he had been sent there by the power of God. And when Adai came up and went to Abgar, who was in the company of his nobles, and in heading towards him, Abgar had a magnificent vision before Adai. Once Abgar's vision had started, he kneeled down before Adai and worshipped him. Great astonishment seized all those who were standing before him, for they could see nothing of the vision which was being seen by Abgar. Then Abgar said to Adai, You truly are the disciple of Jesus, that powerful one, the Son of God, who sent one to me, saying, I send you one of my disciples for curing your disease and for obtaining life eternal. Adai said to him, Since you believed from the very beginning in him who sent me to you, for that reason I have been sent to you, and if you believe in him, everything in which you do believe, you shall have. Abgar said to him, So I have believed in him, and with respect to those Jews who crucified him, I am ready to take an army with me and go and chastise them. But because the kingdom belongs to the Romans, I am restrained from my covenant of peace, which has been validated by me with our master, the emperor Tiberius, just like my forefathers. Adai said to him, Our master has fulfilled the will of his father. And when he had carried out the will of his father, he was taken up to him, to him and sat with him in glory, with whom he was from since the beginning of time. Abgar said to him, I also believe in him and his father. Adai said to him, Because you possess so much faith, I place my hand on you in the name of him in whom you believe. At the moment he placed his hand upon him, he was cured of the terrible affliction which he had been plagued by for a long time. Abgar was astonished and wondered at the way in which the cure worked in the name of Yahusha, in the name of Jesus, without medicine of any kind. A die too healed in the name of Jesus. As for Abdu, the son of Abdu, who had been suffering from gout in his feet, he was also healed. He brought his feet near Adai. And he, Adai, placed his hand upon them and healed him. And he never suffered from the gout again. He also produced great cures in the city and showed wonderful and powerful works. Abgar said to him, Now that everyone knows that by the power of Jesus Christ you perform all these wonderful works, and we are wondering at your works, I beg you to tell us about the life of Christ, how it was, and about his glorious power and those miracles which... We have heard that he performed, which you have witnessed with the rest of your companions. Adai said to him, I will not hesitate to declare this, for that is why I was sent. Here namely, to speak and to teach everyone who, just like you, is willing to believe. Tomorrow assemble for me all the people in the city, so that I may see in them the word of life by preaching before them about the coming of Christ how it was, and about his glorious power, and about him who sent him, for what and how he sent him, and about his power and wonderful works, and about the glorious mysteries of his coming, of which he spoke while he was in the world, and about the confidence of his preaching, how and for what he lowered himself, and humbled his glorious divinity by taking a body, and was crucified, and descended to the house of the dead, and smote the dividing wall, which had never been removed and gave life to the dead by letting himself by letting himself be slain and descended by himself and des and descended by himself and descended with many to his glorious father with whom he was from eternity and one glorious divinity and Abgar ordered that they should present Adai with silver and gold Adai said to him how could we receive anything which is not ours for look that which was ours we have abandoned, as we were commanded by our master to be without purses and satchels and carrying crosses on our shoulders. We were commanded to preach his gospel to the whole creation. So the whole creation felt and suffered because of his crucifixion, which was for us, for the salvation of all humans. And he told people before King Abgar and before his princes and nobles and before Augustina, the mother of Abgar, and before Shalmoth, the daughter of Maherdath, the wife of Abgar, about the signs of our master and his wonders, and about the glorious miracles which he performed, and about his divine triumphs and ascensions to his father, 
and about how they received powers and abilities at the time he ascended, even as the power by which he had healed Abgar and Abdu, the son of Abdu, the second in authority over his kingdom, and about how we and about how he made them know that which would be revealed at the end of times, and in the demise of all creatures, and the revival and resurrection which is to occur for all humans, and the separation which is to take place between the sheep and the goats, and between the faithful and the unbelieving. And he said to them, Because the gate of life is straight, and the way of truth is narrow, few are the believers of truth, and the power of unbelief is Satan's pastime. Because of this there are many liars, who cause to sin those who look on. For except that there is a good end for the faithful, our master had not descended from heaven, and come to take birth, and to suffer death, and also he had not sent us to be his preachers and evangelists. Those things which we saw and heard from him, things which he had, things which he did and taught, we confidently preached before all, for we would not commit any transgression with respect to the truth of his gospel. And not only these things, but those which were done in his name, after his ascension we also show and we also show and preach i will tell all of you what happened and was done in the presence of those who just like you believed in christ namely that he is the son of the living god protonus the wife of the emperor claudius whom tiberius made second in his kingdom when he went to fight against the hispaniards who had waged war against him, saw the signs and wonders and marvelous works done in the name of Christ by Simon, one of the disciples, when he was in the city of Rome, and she denied the paganism of her forefathers, in which she brought up, and the idolater and the idolatrous images which she had worshipped, and she believed in Christ our Master and worshipped him, and praised with those who were gathered around Simon, and held the Lord in great honor. After this, she also wished to see Jerusalem and those places in which the mighty works of our master were done. So she left without delay and descended from Rome to Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, its dwellers went forth to meet her, and they received her with great honor, as a queen and due to be received. For she was the mistress of the great country of the Romans. But James, who was made principal and ruler in the church, which was built for us there, when he had heard for what reason she had traveled, to that remote place arose and went to her and he went to her at her dwelling place in the great royal palace of king herod when she saw him she received him with great joy in the same way she had received simon peter he also showed her cures and powerful works as those performed by simon and she said to him show me golgotha upon which christ was crucified and the wood of his cross upon which he was hung by the jews and the grave in which he was placed. James said to her, these three, three, these three things your majesty wishes to see are under the control of the Jews. They possess them and do not allow us to go to pray there before Golgotha and the grave and neither the wood of his cross will they give us. And not only this, but they also relentlessly harass us so that we may not write and preach about Christ. And many times they put us in prison. When she heard these things, the queen, without more ado, commanded, and they brought before her Onias, the son of Hanan, the priest, and Gedelia, the son of Cephas, and Judah, the son of Ebed, Shalom, chiefs and leaders of the Jews. And she said to them, Give access to James and to those who are of the same mind with him to Golgotha, the grave and the wood of the cross and let no one forbid them to minister there according to the practice of their ministry. And when she had so commanded the priest, she went to see those places and she delivered those places to James and to those who accompanied him. After that, she entered the grave and found therein three crosses, one of our master and two of those thieves who were crucified with him on his right hand and on his left. And at the time she and her children entered the grave, at that very instant her maiden daughter fell down and died. 
without pain, without disease, and without any cause of death. And when the queen saw that her daughter had unexpectedly died, she kneeled and prayed inside the grave. Ooh, that's interesting. <laughs> and said in her supplication, God, who gave himself to death for all humans and was crucified right in this place and was laid in this grave. And as God, who keeps everyone alive, has risen and made many to rise with him. Let the Jews, the crucifiers here, along with the trans, along with the transgressing heathens whose idols carved images, whose idols carved images and terrors of paganism, I have denied. Make them not see me, deride me, and say that all which has happened to her is because she denied the gods that she had worshipped, having confessed Christ instead, whom she knew not, and went to honor the place of his grave and his crucifixion. And if, O oh my master, I am not worthy to be heard, because I have worshipped idols instead of you, spare yourself for the sake of your glorious name so that it may not be blasphemed in this place as they blaspheme you at your crucifixion. She said all these words in her prayer and in the exhilaration of her supplication, she repeated them before all those who were present. Her eldest son approached her saying to her, hear what I have to say to your majesty. I think thus in my mind that the death of my sister, which was unexpected, is not in vain, but it is in fact a wonderful work according to which the name of God will be praised, not blaspheme. For behold, we enter into the grave and find therein three crosses, and we know not which of them is the cross upon which Christ was hung. In the death of my sister, we may be able to see and learn which is the cross of Christ. For Christ never neglects those who believe in him and search for him. Queen Protonus, who was very crest, Queen Protonus, who was very crestfallen, at this time, saw in her mind that her son had uttered wise words, just and truthful. And with her own hands, she took hold of one of the crosses and placed it on the dead body of her daughter, which lay before her, and prayed thus, O God, who has shown wonderful works in this very place, as we have heard and believed, if this cross, O Master, is yours, and upon it your humanhood was hung, by the wicked, show the strong and almighty power of your divinity, which rests in the humanhood, and bring back to life my daughter, so that she may arise, and your name shall be glorified in her. <clears throat> may her soul revisit her body, so that your crucifiers may be, be, may be bewildered, and your worshippers may exult. And she waited a long time after she had sh such spoken. After that, she removed the cross from her daughter's dead body placed another and then said in her supplication, O God, by whose will worlds and creatures endure, wishing the life of all mortals that they may turn to him and is not forgetful of the prayers of those who seek him. If this cross is yours, O Master, show the power of your triumphs as you always do and bring back to life my daughter so that she may arise and thus the heathens who worship your creation instead of you may be marveled and the faithful and the truthful may confess so that their mouth may be open to your praise before those who reject you. And she waited a long time after having said these things and took the second cross from upon her daughter. And then she took the third cross and placed it on her daughter before she lifted her eyes to heaven and opened her mouth in prayer. At the time, at the very moment, which took less than the blinking of an eye, the cross touched the dead body of her daughter. She came back to life and arose abruptly, giving praise to God, who had restored her to life by the power of his cross. When she saw how her daughter came back to life, Queen Protonus trembled and was greatly frightened. But although frightened, she glorified Christ and confessed him, naming him the son of the living God. Her son said to her, my lady, you see that if this had not happened today, it might have occurred that they would have abandoned the cross of Christ by which my sister came back to life and might have taken and honored one of those murderous thieves. Now, look, we have seen and may exult and Christ who has done this may be glorified in her. And she took the cross of Christ 
and gave it to James so that it might be kept in the greatest honor. She also ordered that a great and marvelous building be erected over Golgotha on which he was crucified and over the grave in which he was placed so that these places might be honored and used for prayers and services. When she saw all the inhabitants of that city, which she had assembled for the site of this work, the queen ordered that her daughter walk without the covering of honor worn by the royals to the palace of the king, wherein she resided, so that everyone could see her and give praise to God. But both Jewish people and Gentiles, who rejoiced at the beginning of this happening and were exultant, became very sad towards the end of it, for they would have been better pleased if this event had not occurred. For they noticed that on account of this event, many began to believe in Christ. And especially when they noticed that the miracles done in his name after his ascension were many more than those performed before his ascension. The notoriety of this occurrence traveled to remote countries. And so did the message of the apostles, my companions who preached about Christ. And there was respite in the churches of Jerusalem and in the cities around it. And both those who witnessed this occurrence and those who did not see it, praise God. And when the queen returned from Jerusalem, from and when the queen returned from Jerusalem to Rome, the people of every city she entered flocked to take sight of her daughter. And when she had entered Rome, she told Emperor Claudius all the things that had happened. And when the emperor heard that, he ordered that all Jews be banished from Rome. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just I was just laughing. He got scared. Is that man? Many people began to speak of that occurrence, and soon word of the deed traveled to Simon Peter. Whatever the apostles, my companions, did, we preach before every person, so that those who do not know may also hear of those things which by our hand Christ did in the open, so that our master might be glorified by every human being. The things which I repeat before you are told so that you may know and understand how great the faith of Christ is among those who truly embrace his message. James, the chief of the church of Jerusalem, who also witnessed the deed, gave a written account and sent it to the apostles, my companions in the cities. Give me a second. In the cities of their countries. The apostles themselves gave written accounts as well and made known to James all that Christ had done by their hands. And these were read before every multitude of believers. Upon hearing these things, Abgar the king and Augustina, his mother, and Shamath, the daughter of Maherdath, and Phokris, and Abshemesh, and Shamshagram, and Abdu, and Aghai, and Barkalba, along with the rest of their companions, rejoiced tremendously and glorified God and confessed Christ. Abgar the king said to Abdi, I wish that everything which we have heard from you today and all other things you would tell overtly before all the inhabitants of this city so that everyone may hear the preaching of the gospel of Christ, which you teach to us so that they may be firmly established in the doctrine which you teach to us, so that many may understand that I was in the right to believe in Christ, in the letters that I sent to him, and may know that he is God, the Son of God, and you are his true and faithful disciple, and that you show his glorious power by performing miracles before all those who wish to believe in him. The next day, Abgar commanded Abdu, the son of Abdu, who had been healed of a painful disease of his feet to send a messenger in order to proclaim in all the city that the whole population must be assembled, men and women alike at the place which was called Beth the Barra, Beth the Barra, the ample space of the house of Avida, the son of Abdunached, so that they might hear the doctrine of Adai the apostle and how he taught about the one who gave him the power to cure and perform those miracles, wonders which he did incessantly. For when he healed Abgar the king, it was the nobles only who stood before him and saw him when he healed him by the word of Christ, 
whom many physicians have proven to be incapable of healing. And now a stranger cured him by the faith of Christ. When all the dwellers of that city had been assembled, men and women alike, as the king had commanded, Abida and Labu and Chafsai and Barkalba and Labun and Labubana and Chesron and Shoshagram, they all stood there with their companions, who were princes and nobles of the royal court and various high officials. And there also were all the workmen and the artisans and the Jews and the Gentiles living in that city. And there were also foreigners from the countries of Soba and Haran and the rest of the dwellers of all Mesopotamia. And all of them stood to hear the doctrine of Adai, about whom they had heard that he was the disciple of Jesus, who was crucified in Jerusalem. And he performed cures in his name. And Abdi began to speak to them like this, Hear all of you and understand that which I will speak before you. I am not a physician who uses medicines and roots, expert in the art of the sons of men. I am instead the disciple of Jesus Christ, the physician of distressed souls and the savior of future life, the son of God who descended from heaven and was clad in a body and became a human being. And he gave himself on the cross for all humanity. And when he was hung on the wooden cross, he darkened the sun in the sky. And when he entered the grave, he arose and leaving the grave behind, went into view with many. And the guards of the grave did not see how he came out of the grave. Yet the angels of heaven were the preachers and writers of his resurrection. And if he had not wished, he would not have died because he is the master of death, the way out of all things. And if it had pleased him, he would not have again covered himself with a body, for he is himself the cover of the body. For the will that predisposed him to the birth from a virgin also made him lower himself to the pangs of death. And he canceled the magnificence of his illustrious divinity who was with his father from the beginning of occurrence. He of whom the prophets of olden times spoke in their mysteries, and they illustrated him in signs of his birth and his suffering and his resurrection and his ascension to his father and of his sitting at the right hand of the father. And, and look, he, he is worshiped by celestial beings and by the dwellers of earth. He who is worshiped, excuse me, family, he who was worshipped since the beginning of time, for although he had the semblance of mortal men, his power and his knowledge and his command were of God himself, as he said to us, Behold, now is the Son of Man exalted, and God exalts himself in him by miracles and by wonders, and by the honor of being at the right hand of the Father. But his body is the pure vestment of his wonderful holiness, by which we are able to see his invisible command therefore along jesus christ of whom we preach and write upon we also praise his father and the spirit of his divinity because that is what he commanded us namely to baptize and forgive those who believe in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit the prophets of the olden times spoke like this the lord god and his spirit sent us and if I articulate a word that was not spoken by the prophets, the Jews who are standing among you and hear me will not receive it. And if again I say the name of Christ over those who have illnesses and diseases, and they are not healed by his wonderful name, they who worship the work of their hands will not believe. So if these things that we say are written in the books of the prophets, and we are capable of proving the healing powers over the sick, not a single person will look on us without discerning the faith that we preach, according to which God was crucified for all humanity. If there are those who do not wish to accept these words, let them come near us and reveal to us what is on their mind. For if they suffer from an infirmity of the mind, 
we may offer them healing medicine for the cure of their illness. For even though you were not present at the time of the agony of Christ, but you saw the darkened sun, learn and understand the great dismay. There was at the time of the crucifixion of him whose gospel had spread all over the world by the power of the wonderful works that his disciples, my companions, are performing all over the earth. And those who were Jewish and knew only the Hebrew language as taught by their mothers, look, today they can speak in all languages so that both those who dwell in distant lands and those who do not can hear so that both those who dwell in di so that both those who dwell in distant lands and those who do not can hear and believe that he is the same he who confused the tongues of the wicked in this region which lies before us it is he who today teaches the meek and the desolate from Galilee in Israel through us the faith of truth and guineas I whom you can see am also from Panis, from where the Jordan River springs. And I was chosen along with my companions to be, to be a preacher of, the, of this gospel, by which, look, every region resonates with the wonderful name of the worshipful Christ. Let for that reason none of you possesses a heavy heart against the truth and keep their minds at a distance from truthfulness. Do not be led by thoughts destructively sinful, which are full of the anguish of a miserable death. Do not be led astray by the evil customs of your heathen forefathers that might keep you at a distance from the path of truthfulness, which is in Christ. For those who believe in him are those who are trusted by him, who willingly descended to us to put an end to all the sacrifices made by the world's heathens and to the offering of idolatry. For those creatures should no longer be adored, but we should worship him and his father instead and his Holy Spirit. For I, as my master has commanded me, look, I preach and write and his silver coin. Look, I throw before you on the table and the seed of his word. I sow in the ears of every person. Those who wish to receive it will also receive the good reward of confession. And those refusing to obey against them, I spread the dust of my feet, as my master had commanded, has, as my master has commanded me. Therefore, my beloved, turn away from wicked ways and vile deeds, and turn to him with a good and honest will, as he turned himself to you with his mercy and his forgiving grace. And do not be as the bygone generations of olden times who because they hardened their heart against the fear of God were punished plainly being chastised in such a way that those who came after them could tremble with fear because that for which our master came into the world was in fact to teach and show that at the end of life there is a resurrection for all people and at that time their deeds will stand for their own persons and their bodies will become books for the written things of justice and there will not be anyone who does not know writing, for everyone will read the letters of his own book on that day. And the account of his actions he takes with the fingers of his hands. Therefore, the illiterate will know the new writings of the new language. And there is not one who will say to his fellow, read this to me, because over all people will reign one doctrine and one teaching. Bear this thought in mind, then. Be vigilant and open up your eyes, because if it passes from your mind, it cannot pass from his judgment. Seek the mercy of God, so that he may forgive the detestable faithlessness of your heathenism. For you have abandoned him who created you on this face of the earth, and makes his rain come down, and his sun rise upon you, and you worship instead of him his works for regarding the idols and heathen sculptured images and whatever of the creation in which you believe and which you worship if there were in them feeling and understanding for the sake of which you worship and glorify them 
it would be right for those things which you have made and engraved and have firmly fixed with nails so that they will not fall to receive your honors. All right, family, I'm going to stop there for the night. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the reading so far. I'm going to go ahead. Um, I stopped on for next time. I stopped on page. Hold on, let me show it. Get it up. I stopped here on page. I stopped here on page 24. Hold on, let me try to get this in front of the camera as best as I can. Oh, this is annoying. Why it's so difficult? Okay. See, this, this is where we are. We are. You can pause this if you want and read it yourself. But this is page 24. All right, family. Thank you for staying and for listening. Um, Shalom. I'll see you on part two of this book. We should finish it next time. It's not a long book. It's only... Um, Or is that? That it's only about yep, yeah, only forty nine pages. And we got to twenty four. So we almost about half well, yeah, I actually I say it's halfway. Alright, family, be blessed and I will talk to y'all later. Shallow Wild.